Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a drama, fantasy, and science fiction film called Downsizing. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. At a research facility in Norway, Dr. Jürgen Aspiransen experiments on multiple lab mice. One of them surprisingly produces the results that he wishes, making him celebrate. He immediately rushes to his colleague, Dr. Andreas Jacobsen. To break the surprising news, Jürgen claims that he has found what they have been looking for in the office, and they embrace. Five years later, Andreas speaks before a group of attendees, warning them about the dangers of overpopulation. Not long after, he opens a small box, revealing Jürgen, who is now five inches tall. Everyone in the function room looks at him in astonishment as they murmur. Jürgen explains the process of the experiment, which he believes could be the solution to the population's growth rate. Andreas re-enters the stage as he holds a trash bag that contains waste produced by small people for four years. Following him, 36 small people introduce themselves to the audience, receiving a big round of applause. The highly uncommon innovation caught people's attention worldwide, considering it the most significant breakthrough of science. Among the viewers is Paul Safranik, who is instantly amazed by it. Paul takes care of his mother, who suffers from fibromyalgia, making him administer her medication. Ten years later, Paul is married to Audrey, and they are house hunting. The couple is financially struggling, causing a strain in their marriage. Dave and Carol, their former classmates, attend and make an attention-grabbing entrance at their high school reunion. The couple has downsized and boasts the benefits of being small. With their size, resources seem to be endless and financial struggles are out of the picture. The place where downsized people reside is called Leisureland. Having heard great things about the place, Paul and Audrey drive all the way there. As they enter, they attend a seminary held by Jeff and Laura Lunowski, discussing the benefits of downsizing. The couple shows their mansion and the luxuries that Leisureland has offered them. With the great things that the Lunowskis discuss, Paul and Audrey could not help but be in awe of downsizing. Later, Paul and Audrey inquire further about the procedure. A consultant persuades them to do so, as their money will be equivalent to a higher amount if they downsize. The couple eventually arrives at the decision to downsize and start anew. Their friends organize a farewell party for them at the bar where Audrey's father stops by to wish her well. After spending the last time being normal, Paul and Audrey fly to Leisureland's headquarters. Before they could undergo the procedure, a line of questioning will be done to make sure they consent to the irreversible process. The interviewer also mentions side effects that may happen, including death. Despite it, Paul and Audrey smoothly finish the interview and wait for their turn to be downsized. The couple hugs each other tight before Paul makes his way to the facility. As part of the process, he and other patients are shaved from head to toe. Teeth are also extracted from them as they lie unconscious. All the processes are administered by a big group of medical workers, perfectly in sync in performing the procedures. Once the men are ready, they are brought to a big chamber where the downsizing is finally performed. After some time, the once regular sized men are now 5 inches tall. Still unconscious, a nurse places them in a receiving area, where downsized nurses tend to them. As Paul gains consciousness, a nurse comes in to officially welcome him to Leisureland. She brings in a massive pack of crackers, but he takes no interest in it. The nurse then informs him that someone on the phone is asking for him. Paul hears from Audrey, who sounds frantic on the other line. In tears, she apologizes to Paul as she changed her mind about downsizing. Audrey isn't ready to leave her friends, family, and life behind as her hair was being shaved. Paul is disappointed, to say the least, but he has no choice but to accept his irreversible state. A guide named Matt brings Paul to his new home, but he cannot help but be sad during the trip. Although he has a new and grand mansion, not sharing it with anyone makes him feel sad. Paul spends the first night in his new home watching TV, and tunes into the news. He hears of 17 Vietnamese activists who were involuntarily downsized and smuggled to the US. The lone survivor is Nok Lan Tran, who was taken to the Leisure Land Hospital to amputate her leg because of severe injuries. A year later, Paul finalizes his divorce with Audrey, finally signing the papers. He now works as a telemarketer and is living a regular life. That day, he attends a birthday party, where his friend, Dave, consoles him for the divorce. Paul says that downsizing is a mistake, but Dave assures him that times will get better. That night, Paul shares dinner with Kristen, a single mom who he sees as a love interest. Their quiet dinner is interrupted by his upstairs neighbor throwing a loud party. Because of this, Paul reprimands Dusan, 
the neighbor, but he only invites Paul to come to the party instead. After dinner, Paul suggests that he meet Kristen's son, but she is hesitant to do so. Kristen explains why, but Paul abruptly leaves and decides to join Dusan's party. Paul enters with a real rose to give to Dusan as a peace offering. Upon seeing his neighbor, Dusan welcomes him with open arms and introduces him to Conrad, a sailor. Paul unexpectedly finds himself enjoying the party's atmosphere and even dances along to the music. A young woman dances with him and slips a drug into his mouth through a kiss from behind. For the rest of the night, Paul feels phased as an effect of the drug. The following day, Paul wakes up in Dusan's living room just as a cleaning crew arrives. While Dusan talks to him about his business's run in small cities, Paul excuses himself to talk to Naklan. In the bathroom, Paul introduces himself and sees her pocket some medicines. He warns her about the painkillers, but she pays him no mind. As an occupational therapist, Paul offers Nock Lan to help her with her prosthetic leg, and she accepts. She asks Paul to come with her, as her friend needs medical help as well. Both of them immediately commute and head to Nock Lan's residence. To Paul's surprise, there is a side of leisure land that is far from advertised. Just like in the regular world, there is part of it where people are in poverty. There, he sees multiple downsized people cramped in an apartment complex in poor living conditions. Nakland shows Paul her place, and the place obviously underwhelms him. She introduces him to an ailing woman named Gladys, who is dying of cancer. According to Nakland, Gladys' husband died in the downsizing process, and she is now alone. Nakland gives Gladys some medication to ease her pain, and Paul offers help to move the sick woman to avoid bed sores. Days pass and Paul returns to the slums to make adjustments on Nakland's prosthetic leg. As he arrives, Nakland breaks the news that Gladys has passed, but she tells him that she was happy in her final days. While Paul fixes the prosthetic leg, he accidentally breaks it, putting Nakland in a state of rage. Consequently, he helps her fulfill her job as a cleaning lady and does the work for her. He temporarily becomes part of the cleaning crew while Nakland supervises him. After the shift, Nock Lan goes around Leisure Land to collect leftover food from restaurants and other homeowners. She does this to help her neighbors in a small way and do good in the community. Paul accompanies her as she checks on her neighbors, especially those in great need of medical help. The following day, their client is Dusan, who makes fun of Paul for helping Nock Lan. However, Paul doesn't mind it and willingly helps Nock Lan while waiting for her new prosthetic leg. Meanwhile, Dusan offers Paul a chance to travel to Norway along with Conrad and visit the first small community. The three men inform Nakhlan about it, saying that Paul won't help her for some time as he will travel. She responds by saying she wants to tag along, but Dusan is against it. To him, bringing her might be a hassle, given her physical condition. Nakhlan mentions how Jürgen, the brain behind downsizing, wrote her letters while she was still in the hospital and invited her to visit Norway. According to her, Jorgen felt terrible for what happened to her, and she breaks into tears. Dusan and Conrad are deeply moved by her story and lets her tag along. The following day, they embark on a journey to visit Norway by sea. At daybreak, Nakhlan introduces Paul to Jorgen and his wife, and Helene. Paul is more than overwhelmed to meet such a prominent scientist in such a beautiful place. During their meeting, Jürgen and Anne Helene reveal that humanity is on the verge of extinction because of constant methane emissions in the Antarctic Ocean. At the moment, only 3% of the population has been downsized, and it is not enough to bid them save the world. That night, Paul massages Nakhlan's leg as part of her therapy, but both end up making love. After days of traveling, the group finally reaches the first small community. Unlike Leisureland, the place is surrounded by nature and is close to the sea. Their life relies on crops and other natural resources as they reside by the sea. The group rides a carriage on the way to meet other citizens and is given a warm welcome. A woman named Solve is ecstatic to see the visitors and immediately gives Paul and Nakhlan a tour. To their surprise, the small community is establishing a vault underground to preserve human life. This is in preparation for a major disaster that will wipe out the human race in a matter of time. According to Solve, the resources in the vault could last them 8,000 years, just until the earth could recover. Paul is amazed by the innovations that the small community has developed and is inspired by them. At the dining hall, Jürgen gives a speech about how the vault could help them preserve human life. The people cheer for him and chant, we are ready, signaling their willingness to enter the vault. As they applaud, Paul contemplates whether he should join the small colony. At night, Nakhlan finds him alone in the dark, and they get into an argument. Paul persuades her to join him and enter the vault together, but she refuses to. She wants to devote her life to saving other people in need, but Paul finds it senseless. 
To prove a point, Knock Land brings Paul to Dusan and Conrad, telling them his plan. Both men also find it surprising that Paul wants to enter the vault. According to them, there is more to see in the world, and being locked up is not a good idea. Despite their protests, Paul has made up his mind, and he walks out. The following day, Paul enjoys the community's atmosphere, playing music and mingling with other people. For the last time, Knock Land confronts Paul about their relationship, if it's even a real one. Paul assures her that he feels love toward her, but he does not find a sense of belonging in Leisureland. As the urgency for entering the vault grows, the community watches the last sunset altogether. While other people admire the sunset for the last time, Knock Land clings to Paul and cherishes their last possible moment together. At nightfall, Paul bids goodbye to Dusan, Conrad, and Knock Land, who hands him a Bible. He goes in for a kiss, but Knock Land tilts her head. She tearfully watches Paul walk to the vault, heartbroken because of his decision. As he walks toward the central area of the vault, Paul becomes indecisive and eventually runs back to the door. The new couple embraces each other, thankful that they get to spend more time together. All four travel back to Leisureland, where Paul and Knock Land tend to people in the slums. Finally, Paul has figured out his life's purpose, which is to be in service of those in need, together with the love of his life. The story is a metaphor for how people should minimize their lifestyle for sustainable reasons. It shows the excesses of the upper class and the privilege they have over the regular citizens. They even have a choice to save themselves from a disaster that people in the slums are unaware of. In the end, Paul realizes how lucky he is, but despite this, he turns his back on his privilege and chooses to serve. The main takeaway is to make the world a bigger and better place by living small and simple. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.